Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our second online book club as part of Behind the Books, an exhibition of the most beautiful Swiss books at 10 Books in London. You've got until Saturday, 10th of October to visit the exhibition. It's open from Wednesday to Saturday, 12 to 6. And uh, you can discover the scenography there made by Takeshi Hayatsu Architects, um, a scenography which was made possible by the support of Arctic Papers, who kindly supported us with a uh, significant sponsorship uh, in terms of paper donation. We um, were also able to organize this exhibition thanks to the Swiss Federal Office of Culture. They are the organizers of the Most Beautiful Swiss Books competition and have also supported us to organize Behind the Books. Another important sponsor is the Swiss Embassy in London, who year after year support us and make this possible. Um, the exhibition is at Tender Books, as I mentioned, and uh, we also have to thank our host, Tamsin. She's uh, already hosted us last year and it's been really nice. We're really happy to be back there this year. Please pay her a visit. I think now more than ever, it's really important to support independent bookstores. So this online book club today um, has three guests. Two of them collaborated together on a book, uh, I am, which is awarded this year. It's Matthias Klotu and Sarah Handelman. Matthias Klotu is a graphic designer, while Sarah is an editor. I'll first introduce uh, Matthias. He's a Swiss graphic designer based in London. Um, he founded his uh, independent studio in 2016 after working for other designers for a while. Uh, current projects include the design of new architects with the Architecture Foundation, as well as, as the redesign of their website. He has also worked on publications for Drawing Matter and has also worked on a new identity and wayfinding for the Fashion Gallery at the Vienna Museum with Rosbar Architects. <clears throat> He's designed books for the White Cube, exhibition design for the Royal Academy in London, the art direction for the bespoke typographic and system of fashion brand Arquette in 2016. And finally, he's a regular of the Miss Beautiful Swiss Books exhibition. He's designed a catalog in 2015. Sarah, on the other hand, is not a graphic designer. She's an editor. Her work centers um, around the production of objects. This can be books, journals, websites, branding, exhibition and events. And she works with cultural organizations, design studios and individuals to basically go from the idea stage to a project. Her work takes place at every stage of production from ideation to commissioning to manuscript editing and briefing to working with the team of designers and printers. So it's amazing to have her today so she can talk to us about her working relationship with Matthias on the book that they were awarded with this year. Sarah has worked as an editor at the New Inquiry, the Architectural Association, the AA, the Royal Academy of Arts and the Kramnik Collection. She um, is a director of Drawing Matter, well she just was a director from March 2019 to June 2020. And there she oversaw a public program of books, an online magazine, events and exhibitions. Besides that she also conducts her own personal research on post-war visual culture. Matthias and Sarah, the floor is yours. In models. It's meant to be used and referenced and often, and it sees many different visitors uh, each year, from students to practitioners, uh, to curators, to graphic designers, um, to, uh, and to, every, to, to anyone in between who has an interest in drawing, uh, not necessarily on the architectural. Um, at the same time, Drawing Matter as a place and site is a collection of structures and built work by contemporary architects. So you can see where it's located um, here in Somerset. So these contemporary projects include a cow shed by Stephen Taylor, 
and A Barn by Stephen Taylor as well. A project by David Grand George, a new, a new multi-purpose space by Clancy Moore that takes that lives inside the envelope of, a, of another shed. There is a container library originally designed by Cedric Price, and even a, a trio of columns designed by Alvaro Siza. The archive itself is designed by Hugh Strange, and uh, this is where the collection lives. Nothing here is really fixed in terms of history and in terms of building. Everything has multiple functions, as you'll see in what Matthias has to say. And things move around all the time on the site and in the archive. So it's in that spirit that um, alternative histories wondered how drawings and architects might time travel by asking whether a contemporary architect with their own references and prompts might respond to a historic drawing with a model of their own. And th that's what Marius and Janche really wanted to see when they um, themselves with Neil and Alice identified 85 different contemporary practices in the UK and, the, and Europe and paired each one with a drawing from the collection. So each office was sent a full scale reproduction of the drawing that was chosen especially for them. And the architects were then asked to respond uh, with a model of their very own. Uh, the models were then collected and then brought to a gallery in Mayfair in London where they were shown together in what was in fact an enormous model designed by Marius and his studio Veldberg. And you'll see that in a moment. So when the exhibition opened, uh, we still weren't sure if we were gonna have a catalog. It was something that um, I, when I was working with Drawing Matter as director, was um, talking to the collector Neil Hobhouse about, and um, we were sort of on the fence, but it was only really when Siva in Brussels expressed interest in taking Drawing Matter on, taking alternative histories on tour, uh, if you will, we decided that it was kind of now or never and we had to move very quickly. So uh, when I called Matthias um, trying not to panic, we had about eight weeks, six mm. to eight weeks to produce the catalog. Mm. And that's where I'll hand it over to you. Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll, we'll show the catalogs <clears throat> in a moment as well. Um, um, it's the same catalog, but three three covers. Anyway, um, I wanted. I just wanted to say I, I also really loved the this what we see here. Um, at some point, I'll, I'll, I'll show you that in a sec. Um, we we kind of engage with each of the the eighty five models, so we had to kind of unpack them, and I think it was quite telling to, as a designer, also. Kind of related to 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 architects in some ways um, to see how they pack the the models and the level of instructions they give they would give um, or warning or whatever um, and and how fragile they would be intentionally or not I think it's um, you know the way you the way you present something was quite uh, interesting um, so in a way when I when I was contacted. Uh, for the project, I I, um, I knew about the exhibition. I didn't visit it. I still haven't uh, to this day. Um, but it was um, in a way I felt a little bit like I came after the party, and uh, you know something has already kind of been built. And there was this huge model um, made as a display where you could go in and see the other models. Um, I never I've never been to Drawing Matter to Chatwell Farm either. Uh, I knew about it um, through um, publication that I designed uh, in the past, that I had designed in the past. And um, so in a way, I, I, the first step for me was as a kind of audience to engage with it. So it kind of started to just kind of go closer and closer and, and thinking maybe, you know, in a way, uh, and I will, I will summarize some stuff here uh, too, but in a way, you know, someone went from drawing to model and I was going to back to the sheet again um, and, and the paper. And so kind of trying to see what is, um, what are these models made of? 
And so um, I could see, you know, Instagram, um, all these practices would have pictures of those models that they uh, published on the show and starting to, and trying to understand what was going on really. And, um, you know, the link between, uh, I, there was this amazing collection of drawings, which I thought, you know, is an archive. So should be treated from a graphic design point of view as an archive in a way like, you know, words that would come to mind is like respectfully or, you know, treat uh, um, doing good repro when you print something, etc. And on the other hand, I was uh, looking at models that had taken some liberties or, but at least were made by architects who are practicing today. Um, so there's this idea of what's been done in the past still lives today, the idea of history and, and, and most um, importantly as a designer, why would I make a book uh, for this now? And uh, of course, I, it's nice to have work, but also um, what does it mean to do this book? Do we need it? And what should be its form? Um, I mean, Instagram is one thing, things, you know, people visit uh, not in the same way, but people get uh, to know that an event has happened, especially these days, we know it through Zoom, like we do tonight or through like social media or digital platform. So there's definitely, we know there's definitely a value in books, uh, in printed books, but also I think it's, you know, in a way the brief that I was given was very much a brief of a catalog uh, in the traditional uh, term. And directly I wanted to do something else than a catalog or in a way do the, also play that game of something exists and how can we um, how can we maybe reinvent it or at least um, have another approach to it. So you know, start, I'm, I'm going to show you quite quickly some a lot of images of the process. It's going to be quite bricolage. So this is, for instance, I started to look at drawings and and you know very. Sometimes it's dumb ideas that are quite successful, especially visually, that communicate something quite quickly. So combining them by color of paper, um, here they're not shown as scales, but this early sketch was useful for us <clears throat> a bit later, sorry, when we, when we went to repro actually. Um, so that's one aspect. And by that also engaging with those um, drawing And then that last spread is the, all the odd ones, the nice pink one on the uh, top left. And so, you know, trying to visiting Chatwell Farm for the first time and starting to make sense of those drawing and really having this more traditional um, service aspect of graphic design, um, as in reproducing something well um, and, and, and uh, you know, um, rationalizing um, the color of papers, all of them would be would have different colors, and also starting to understand as an audience, it's different caps. No, there's the cap of the graphic designer, and then the cap of the the audience. As an as a as a member of the audience, I was also um, really interested in how many scales they were and the the level of um, some were really in good states and some really bashed out. Um, and actually, Neil was not so precious about, mm -hmm. uh, about them. You know, he handles them with no gloves. And I quite like this way. I mean, this allowed us to have a real workshop in the, that's, that's in Chatwell. And um, it's definitely a way, you wouldn't make a book, you wouldn't make a catalog in any other collection in that way. It's, mm. It is meant as a kind of place to sort of mm. experiment and push that convention. Yeah, and and then there was a series of uh, photographs that were already made as well. So in a way, you know, the the first outcome you see this image with a weird perspective. It was on purpose. So there was already like a, a design choice, <clears throat> a, a direction uh, visually given. So I could see, you know, I could see a catalog, quite a small catalog maybe with those being kind of silhouettes or becoming really graphic. That was a temptation. Um, but, you know, kind of just starting looking at them and how, um, how, how they were photographed and, and, you know, 
I haven't, I hadn't seen them in real. So that was the only way. Um, it was definitely models of today, I would say, somewhere quite bonkers in a way. Um, and, you know, just kind of absorbing all of it. And so, you know, two aspects, you know, the drawings and then the, the, the models. Um, so quite quickly, um, you know, time was of the essence. So it was about, um, I said it like in, in a way, taking that role of service. <clears throat> and so um, reproducing things well, which is traditionally what a catalog would do, but then also uh, going um, beyond that. So the first thing was to find a structure um, and my idea was to reshoot some of them but uh, quite early on and to to have something that is more intuitive and uh, rather than uh, documenting I think both could live together um, and um, and to somehow find something that a, a book would not necessarily be able that would be that wouldn't be the, the first thing that a book can do um, kind of going close to the detail, showing texture and giving a kind of sensorial uh, approach to it. Um, so starting to, you know, there's 85 uh, models, 85 drawings. So why don't we pair them together? There was also something that is going, uh, that is a departure from the exhibition where the drawings were not shown. I wanted to go back to something much more simple where drawings are just next to the models. So here in yellow, you see the models. Uh, the drawings, or sorry, and here are the models in blue. Um, and I'm going to speak about the binding later, but that kind of allowed for the whole structure of the book. Um, well, it's now actually um, about you know those. We were constantly. My first visit in 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 Shatwell, we were constantly looking at these various. Uh, quality of paper, so the kind of like unbound feeling of a book or something um, that, you know, would feel uh, a little bit casual, kind of effortless in a way, but it was, and that's another question, which I'm not talking so much tonight, but it's also how, you know, it is also a stream of interest as a designer, and sometimes projects find the right place and the right time. Uh, this was definitely something I wanted to do, partly because it's maybe the, the, one of the phantasm for, for graphic designers or book designers, this kind of uh, book binding, but also I tried it on a few projects and it, it didn't, never really felt right. The kind of systematic of this book, the pairs of 85 models with 85 drawings felt quite nice. Um, why? Because a sheet of paper would be then bound, uh, then I'm showing here on the, on, on the video, but would be bound in the middle. So there is a, you know, there's always a pairing. Um, between the two. Um, and then in the center that would allow for more, you know, the index, the more kind of uh, um, um, descriptive uh, things, that's the, the book in total. Um, so then how to, you know, the sequence again, um, I think th this was resolved quite simply by ordering them by scale. And again, making sense of them starting to by doing that, that brought also other ideas. Um, we just got in the studio um, more knowledgeable about the, this project by, by doing that and engaging with it a bit more. Um, and then, um, so speaking with Sarah at the same time about uh, should we reshoot them? Is it possible? Is there a bit of budget? Is there time most of it? It was like kind of week three. Um, we, we, I, I chatted to Thomas Sadonk, um, and who I knew from school, followed his work. We never worked together before, really. Um, but it's, his work felt like, again, the same kind of, um, his interest was, I think, something that would uh, go well with that. And he could engage quite quickly um, and, and just get it instantly, I would say, um, which he did. Um, so we, you know, took a car and organized a two day uh, shoot with Sarah and Thomas, um, which was quite, uh, Thomas helped us to be, Thomas was quite adamant about starting at seven in the morning, shooting those models and which lasted until seven, eight. 
Um, I mean, yeah, in, I would say in the British context, 7 a.m. is quite early. In Switzerland, maybe it's okay. Um, and uh, so we went to that, you know, to that kind of, uh, um, um, that kind of collection of buildings. So in a way, it felt a bit like a kind of scale, scaled up version of those models, no? you know, with different uh, things. And so the Stephen Taylor building, that's when, that's where we set up the studio. And the idea was every three minutes, we had art, art handlers who would, uh, you know, come uh, gloves on and take a model, uh, take it out of the model. That would be the first time I see it, the first time Thomas see it. I would be the kind of uh, Thomas assistant in a way. Um, he would shoot uh, images with go on my computer with edits. Uh, so it was quite, you know, very intuitive, very fast, very dynamic and very direct. Um, so that's Thomas Adonk um, um, shooting some of the models. You know, more models. That's Ross Bar Architect. Um, hi, Ross. <laughs> Um, sometimes it just made sense to shoot them in the box. <laughs> That's at the end of the day. <laughs> I love that image. Um, yeah. And these are shorts. Um, um, and, and so, yeah, I'm just going to show, a, a, uh, you, can, you can look at the catalog, of course, but I'm going to show a few pairings. So, you know, like decisions about what do we show? And in a way, the more we shot, we discussed it with Thomas before, but, you know, it was a, basically it was an invitation to a certain eye, a certain viewpoint. And this became a narrative just by essence, because there is a style, Thomas has a style, he has a, a certain eye to view things. Um, so in a way it kind of feels like um, it's that miniature, um, person that goes through all the models. And a few more. So that was the collection that added up to the drawing. The models was the walk through the models um, and showing it allowed to show um, a lot of the textures, um, not everything by choice. Um, so again, it's then that also creates the catalog as something that is complementary to the exhibition and not an explanation of the exhibition. Um, I think there is a nice, you know, we, we shot in the, the, in the Stephen Taylor um, 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 pavilion, who was also part of the exhibition and did a model based on one of the drawing um, that you could find in the building next door. Um, so in a way that felt, you know, there, there is, the, the circle was uh, kind of complete. Um, and I would speak a little bit about the binding, you know, that's previous book when I tried uh, the binding, I'll, I'll, I'll be quite brief. And we ended up, you know, going for a square, um, just made more sense. Um, and then the final book was something that was a bit taller again, because of images uh, and, and the content. So we started again looking at, at those things and how we can bind a book. Um, the first book of the previous project was also not pr production wise, was not working, so we couldn't do it. Uh, we tried approaching a few printers again and uh, you know this, the, the book would need to be quite small. So the question was how can we increase the, the scale um, all, all these are more technical questions, but, um, and, you know, kind of little by little uh, uh, thought about a, a bespoke version of, of that binding, um, basically trying to do something that is not, you know, creased on the spine, but that really feels like a stack of paper that's just folded and stitched and that's it. And um, with some Swedish uh, thread. Um, colored thread, uh, a pink, a green, and a white one. Um, so there we go. As a conclusion, I'm just going to share a few, you know, images of how the book was structured. You know, one paper would contain the images, a gloss paper, 
and one paper, an uncoated, which is more in the world of you know tradition, respectful, um, um, kind of polite layouts, uh, would 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 show the drawing and reproduce the drawing well. Um, and then the the last uh, section uh, would show those images by Gus that were done already, um, which show scale and also help us navigate through the book. Um, and that's you know that's the the, the animal. Um, and to end, I'm going to show something we tested with Ariana. We were trying to just fold enough sheets, ask the printer to fold enough sheets so that it gives direction to the other sheets, but doesn't fold too much. Um, <laughs> voila. And proofs. Yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, that's what, that's what, that was alternative histories. <laughs> Thank you very much, Matthias and Sarah. Um, we now have the pleasure of um, hearing Adeline's presentation. Um, I'm just going to try and sort on my screen because I can't see anything anymore. Sorry. Um, so I'm just going to briefly introduce Adeline, who's joining us from Zurich tonight. Um, Adeline is a graphic designer based in Zurich, as I said. She graduated from ECAL, um, and she also then studied at the University of Zurich in history of art, photography, and cinema, so more of a theoretical uh, background in her master's. In 2010, she uh, studied design criticism um, at the New York School of Visual Arts. And she's mainly active as a designer in the cultural and editorial fields. She works on books, visual identities, and websites. Previous clients include the Bad Bon Kildi Festival, which is a music festival in Switzerland, uh, Theater Sivlin 36, publishing houses such as Patrick Frey, Sternberg, Scheidegger and Spies, Hatje Kantz, also for institutional clients such as Pohelvitsia, the Bern School of Art, um, the Zurich School of Polytechnic School, uh, museums and art centers. And she is a regular collaborator of the artist Claudia Kunt. So um, I would like to present you this little, little book I did last year for Patrick Price. And it won the Most Beautiful Swiss Book Award this year. It's the work of Olivier Souter, which is a Swiss artist who, um, whose work is based on, or is really interested in collecting portraits photography and kind of rearranging them in another kind of, uh, to telling another kind of story. And Olivier wanted to work with me because he had, he had seen this book I did for the, for the Bad One Kilby which is a song book. And he really liked the um, kind of the aptic of the book, the, the feeling of it and the touch of the cover material. And I found it always really interesting to, to ask people why they would like to, to work with you, with you. And for him, it was really the, this question of, of a kind of feeling and haptic and materiality of the book. So, we didn't talk a lot about layout, but he was really interested in finding the good, the good material for, for his book. And when I work on new book project, I usually have in mind or as a reference other books that helped me kind of figure out which kind of object my book should, should have. And I had in my studio this, this little uh, Bible don't know why I had it, but I had it. And this had a, a nice of a nice size and a nice weight that I think could, could kind of match the, the, the project of children. So um, this was a bit of, of the starting point of our our um, project. And starting from this, we made a lot of of uh, test with other materials and and trying to test 
what could fit the object. We wanted something that has a, a kind of an intimate feeling because the, um, of the photographs that are showed in this book, it has something very personal. And that's why we, we ended choosing this um, soft touch brown leather cover that is really, really soft when you touch it. And people often do like this, you like really, they, they like the object when you have it in, in, in your hands. And um, so from, from the outside, it is a pretty simple, pretty simple layout, straight to the point, the title in the embossed gold letter. And when you open it, you have <clears throat> these several different kinds of marble paper that reminds a bit on a um, photograph album or old photograph album. And we, we use several different ones so that each book also has a bit of his own identity or of its own, um, yeah, they're all different because of this, of this paper. And we, we use 10 different colors. And the, the book starts like in a very classical way. You kind of come in with this paper and this gold embossing, etc. And unfortunately, the the firm who is producing them had to to stop the production. So we could use the very last uh, piece of of paper of this uh, marble paper. And when you come into the book. You, you see a very simple idea that is kind of executed pretty systematically. Sorry, I don't know how to show it. And it shows portraits of 140 children that have for, for many different reasons become um, well-known people. It has, it's, they are like mathematician or artist or some musician. And when you, when you um, flip to the book, you have all this kind of history and, and, um, and portraits of these children that has this kind of innocence on this picture, but that will become somebody very, like have a very special destiny. All of them have special destiny. So for example, this is Pina Bausch. And you always have the picture of the, of the children and on the other side, the name. So the book kind of works as a history guessing game where you can flip through and can try to figure out uh, who are these, are these people. And maybe you're not that much influenced by the faces until you see who they are. Because it's, of course, when you don't know who they are, the picture are still very abstract. But as soon as you know, okay, this is somebody I know, you kind of start um, thinking of their history or I'm thinking of what they did. And this makes you um, fill the gap, actually. And that's what is interesting about this little book. Also, one interesting thing is that through this book, there is a lot of different way to, to understand it. Uh, from an historian point of view, it is of course interesting to see how, um, how portrait photography has changed during the year. And for example, if you see um, Franklin Roosevelt, that, that looks almost like a, like a girl and this is a, kind of portrait photography that was made in the, the end of the 19th century was where you could really recognize between boys and girls and from an historian point of view it is an, an interesting aspect of the book as well 
This will be, for example, um, Queen Elizabeth. And seeing her already on this throne makes you, of course, like think of, he, of her destiny and what she became afterwards. Um, here you recognize maybe Andy Warhol already. Or Mike Tyson. Patty Smith. Elvis Presley that already has a bit this kind of a cowboy kind of style. Angela Merkel. And this one is maybe the most easy to recognize. Somebody? It's Alfred Hitchcock. So um, I think this was, for, from a graphic point of view, maybe the most simple, simplest book I, I ever did. Because of they're always the same size of the picture, the same margin. They are all black and white. So from a also from a lithography uh, work, it was really, really simple process. But um, I think maybe the, the strength of this book is this simplicity and also the, um, the easy access for the people. It has a, a lot of, of very good reception and we are already printing the second, second uh, edition. And I think that this is also interesting to talk about when about like book design for a broader audience maybe, which we are maybe not always used to as a graphic designer working for maybe artists or a big museum. And sometimes the book are not that accessible. And this one I think speaks to a, to a broader audience and I, I find it really, really interesting, interesting about it. Um, I had, of course, at, at some point during the process, the the envy to like to add more of the of the graphic, and we made some tests on on colored paper and and try some other kind of of typefaces and try some different kind of things. But at the end, the um, the core of the subject, like the the flipping through all the uh, all these stories and all these these lives, were were enough. And maybe the biggest challenge for me in this book was to kind of step back and and do um, as simple as as possible in terms of in terms of layout. So um, yeah, I guess that's it about about this book. Thank you. Thank you so much, Adeline, for this great presentation. Um, so now I would like to invite any questions from the audience. If you have any questions at all, you can use the chat function or you can use the Q&A function and I'll relay the questions to uh, Matthias and uh, Sarah and on the other side. Um, so don't hesitate to ask whatever you want to. Um, while people I may be preparing their questions. I do have a couple of questions as well. Um, the first one related very much to what you just said, Adeline, about um, simplicity, um, that you wanted to add graphic design almost. I found that really interesting. And um, especially in the context of a, a beautiful book competition, uh, it's every year there is the same debate, you know, what is a beautiful book? What is a Swiss book? And uh, I know that you submitted another book this year and the other book was not awarded. Um, so why, why do you think, how did that happen? Like, what, do you have any clue why they chose a simple book and not a more complicated one? Or more yeah, I don't know. I, I must say I was a bit, bit surprised about the choice. Of course, I was really, really happy and honored that this book won, but I, I also sent this one from Claudia Comte. It's a exhibition catalog I did for, for her exhibition in 
Copenhagen. And maybe it's, yeah, it's what I said. Maybe it's because this, this book is really easy to, to get into it. And um, maybe also not underestimate the kind of uh, sensorial experience that you have with an, with an object. And most of the work that we did for children was about that, finding the, the good material and um, having the, the right touch and the right kind of feeling when you hold the book. And maybe it's because also all these aspects that the, also the concept of the book is really simple, but really good. I think people have fun um, flipping through it. And maybe this is correct, a current, like the a simple concept with the like a current layout choices. Um, and about the concept, so you mentioned that the names obviously don't correspond to yeah. children. So it plays a sort of game. So you, your brain kind of thinks that the name corresponds to the picture, but then obviously it's not. Um, is that something that um, Olivier Souter was? keen to introduce or was that something you came up with? Uh, a, a bit both. For him it was really important not to give too much hints on the reader to how to handle the book. He didn't want any text in the book, any explanation and um, yeah he wanted the reader to make what he wants with the book and understand it as he, he wants and some people will maybe see some uh, Walter Benjamin uh, references in the in this kind of photographs other will just see a game and um, we thought it was interesting to have um, this kind of discovery it was the same in the bad one book that I showed before and maybe he took it also from the from there and uh, of course it makes sometimes funny uh, encounters with like wrong name in front of of wrong images and this also make new connection between times or between people that are not really connected in in history or in real life you know that's kind of also a nice reference i mean a way to connect with um, matthias and sarah because your book is also um, a sort of connection between past drawings and contemporary um, interpretation of um, models the first thing that I wanted to ask about is very early on in the conversation, you mentioned that uh, you weren't even sure that there would be a catalogue, actually. Um, but then when the exhibition traveled, that then came the, the idea of having a catalogue. Is that right? Um, and so I was, I was kind of wondering, you know, why, why does one need a catalogue? Like what triggered the decision? What was the motivation? And what is the role and the purpose of a catalogue in that context? context? That's, that's exactly, that's the question I, I, uh, I start now to ask uh, when, when we have that first meeting with someone who wants to do a book. Like why, why, why do a book actually, or why do you want to do a book? It's a bit cheeky and sometimes they're like, what, what are you talking about? And, uh, but it's like, it's quite nice to disturb a bit. Um, and I think it's actually also that about, um, um, confronting or provoking. I mean, that's a little bit um, maybe aggressive, but it's also um, a compliment. Um, it's, yeah, from, I, I mean, I studied in Switzerland. Um, so from very early on from the study, it was book design was like the thing to do or the thing that you would look up to but for various reasons and what has changed one of the things that has changed is definitely the why what position books have um, and and there is a lot of different ways of communicating about an event if we talk about an event or a collection um, so that's i'm not i'm not answering directly the question but that's definitely something that that triggers different uh, replies and I think it makes books more interesting now because you can actually, I think there is that, but there is also, I was um, visiting this weekend Tender Books where we have the, the London exhibition of the Swiss books. 
And it's super nice to see the quality, just the production, not thinking about the style, the design or anything, but just the production, the level of the quality, it's going up and up. It's, it's really graphic designers, uh, obviously good graphic de designers, I guess, or people who, who've really trained, um, they can achieve things much earlier on. And so I guess it, it kind of pushes the, the boundaries um, so you have, in a way, you end up as a designer having maybe more tools, different tools, but also it's easier to make, well, it's easier to print too. That's, that has been the case for a long time. It's quick, you can print lower amounts, quantities, and so you can develop methods. And What about you, Sarah? What triggered the um, idea of having a catalog versus not having one? Well, we were vexed about it um by we uh me and uh, neil hophouse and uh, we were talking to the curators and alice woodman and so it's sometimes sort of tossing around ideas with the architects themselves but everything was on the website already so um all of these architects had sent us images of the models they had even sent us texts explaining how they had responded to the models the conventional catalog lived online. And so if we were going to do a book or a, cat or a catalog after the fact, then it had to do something differently. And I think it was only in the course of the exhibition, of visiting the exhibition all the time. We had events there each weekend, on both days of each week weekend. And what we wound up learning was that there was something about being of looking into the armature that Marius had designed that the models were living in that brought us very close to the material qualities of the models and we realized that was something that we weren't getting as you could only get if you were maybe paying attention to it as a visitor and you weren't certainly weren't going to get it um, by looking at the website so we thought what's really important is maybe not so much the texts that the architects so sweetly gave to us, <laughs> um, but it, it was really about creating this material experience. Mm. And that's what was so fortuitous about mm. um, Matthias's response and Thomas' um, eye when uh, he was looking so closely. So this really, oh, we have a question actually from the audience. I'm just gonna go straight to that. Marie-France is asking, hi, I'm curious to know how Olivier Souter chose the photographs of the children. Is this collection of photographs part of an archive or did he go look for pictures for specific people he was interested in? Yeah, very good question. Um, I think the entire project started when, as he's, he saw a picture of, um, of uh, Rambo as a child. And this kind of triggered him uh, starting this project on collecting ch children pictures. And he, I think he made first a list of people he would like to see figuring in the book. And then he looked um, on several sources, a lot are from the internet and really low resolution. Uh, we printed them like sometimes 60 DPI or really, really low files. Um, but I, that's what also something that I like that the sources were not really from scans or really uh, um, well reproduced uh, images. It was more kind of a testimony of this picture and not the picture itself as a as a piece of, of art. And um, yeah, I think he made a list and then he looked up for pictures and. After, I think for each person, he had also two or three choices. And then for some of them, we choose together which one would be the most like funny one or placative one or the more, the most intriguing one related also to the history of the person. And uh, he's also working on a next project, which is collecting picture of how do you call it in English the the tomb, grave, graveyards, graveyards of of uh, known well known people, which is like the opposite of the maybe of the of the loop, and um, yeah, that's his his uh, research for the moment. 
I wanted to go back to what Sarah you had said earlier about kind of deciding um, the what the catalog should be doing. Um, so how did you approach the brief? Like how did you brief Matthias at the beginning? What did you ask him? <laughs> well, I... Should I share some pictures? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> did you take um, screenshots of my emails? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I should say that um, before this, uh, so Studio Christopher Victor had done the exhibition design for this project. And um, when I talked to, initially when we were like, oh, we've got to do this book now, um, I called up Rosa Nussbaum, who is studio Christopher Victor. And she said, I don't have the time. I can't, I don't have time to do this in six weeks. Um, you should really call Matthias. Um, seems like something he would really respond to. And so I called you um, and I think left a message of kind of trying not to give too many details, but enough to <laughs> tempt you. <laughs> and then- um, Not talking about the time. Not yes. talking about the time, um, but I think I tried to send you as much as I possibly could immediately so that you knew what existed beforehand. And what we knew existed was the drawings themselves and these axonometric views of the models that Gus Kandorp had taken in situ uh, at the gallery before the models were moved onto the um, big installation. So those were the parts that we wanted to play with. And after that, I think it was a series of conversations finding our, what we all, what I think me, Matthias and Neil felt was common ground, which was, we didn't have time for a lot of text. So let's not have any text. <laughs> and, um, we needed a kind of material expression of, of what the models were doing. So I'm, I'm normally very, um, I feel like I send long briefs to designers, maybe too long, but I think this was a few conversations that felt more informal and natural and like we were both giving each other something and growing that conversation. I suppose the time frame made it quite. Yeah. Up as well. Yeah. Um, I was wondering if the audience has another question at all. Now is the time to ask as we're nearing the end. Um, but I believe Adeline has a question for the audience otherwise. Uh, yeah, I saw that I have some spare book to, to give as a gift. So maybe we could do a, um, a bit of a quiz. <laughs> and uh, the person who <laughs> recognized the most people will win a book so if you're up to i i just pick some random random pages and you can write in the chat which who you think it is nobody's writing anything jonas <laughs> Okay, let, let's let's give people some time and maybe you can show a second image. A second. So this was the first image. Um, what about you, Matthias and Sarah, do you know uh, who would you recognize? <laughs> well, you did. You, you gave us the name before. I, I ah, I already gave. Okay. <laughs> To, to <laughs> oh, your cheek was quick, Mike Tyson. You gave us the answer before, though. Okay, doesn't doesn't. We'll give you half a point, Victoria. Okay, maybe this one. Singer, singer, songwriter. Woody Guthrie. No. And the first one was also a French singer. Oh, oh, it was Edith Piaf, the first one, wasn't it? Yes, yes. This one, Elvis, and Guillaume Shaw is asking Elvis. No, it's uh, Bob Dylan. Oh, yeah, Marie France, got it. Marie France said Bob Dylan. Ooh, Marie France, wow. Well done. Marie. Do you have the book at home, Marie France? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Cheating. Let's keep a singer, singer vibe. Who's that? 
I don't know that one. Yes. He's also a, a French singer. Carole says Gainsbourg, Hélène says Brel, Julie. Gainsbourg, yes. Okay, Gainsbourg. Carole wins the book. <laughs> <laughs> Marie yeah, France, okay, I'm doing really cool. well tonight. Cool. I like this Carol. <laughs> Who is she? <laughs> Did I show this one already? The last one. Kurt Cobain? Yeah. I, I've, I've shown it before. I don't think you did. Okay, this. so well done. Matthias okay. was I'm guessing. But Matthias, you can't, you can't, you and Carol share the book. You don't win two books, okay? <laughs> You have to give back. Two points in a way. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, Marie-France and uh, Carol will get in touch and uh, organize a delivery. <laughs> uh, two books now, okay. okay. Two books. Sorry, did you just want to give one? Sorry. I'm no, sorry. it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you, everyone. Thank you to Dimodios as well for joining us tonight. And we have our last talk on Thursday this week with Dan Solba, who is a graphic designer from Basel, and uh, um, Mithil Ducome, who will represent Atelier Musli, who is a uh, French uh, graphic design studio. So please join us this Thursday. And thank you so much for joining today. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Adeline. Ciao, thanks.